Uh, I caught that one, not you. <laughs> <sighs> well, well, that was an easy release. That was uh, difficult, but we got it. Good figure eight, Jay. Thanks. Jay Young here, fishing with Chase and Brad, and finally got one in the bag. Quick start to the morning, got a little bit of clouds covers rolling in, a little bit of sprinkles. This fish came up on a mag dog and Jay did a perfect eight, perfect hook set. Uh, she actually came off right at boat side on the other side of the boat. And I scooped down real deep, got her, she wasn't getting away. It's a real nice fish for Jay though. Welcome to Mayhem's 10,000 cast. Good fish. Yeah. All right, let's get her back and get another Beautiful. one. Beautiful. That's how you want to release them. Good job, buddy. Number one, right there. Hey guys, welcome back to Mayhem 2000 Cast. Down here in the Southern Reservoirs, got Brad Hoppy up here. We're a little later in the spring, doing a lot different techniques. We're gonna be fishing more main lake structure, deeper water, ripping rubber, throwing bucktails, grenades, um, possibly a little jigging. Definitely gonna be a cool episode. Stay tuned, see how we do. All right, Jake, so the technique is crucial for the depth that we're fishing. So throw it out, and you count down to just say 10 or 12, and then don't reel all the way up to the bait where it's tight. If you do that, the bait rises up. So leave a little bit of slack in your line, short pop, short pop. But you, that slack line is key, that way that bait isn't rising, it's just hopping and staying at the same depth. So short, hard pop like that, and then just keep it going. When you get close to the boat, upward rips, because your bait's so deep, so you get that upward rip. Brings your bait up to where you can see it. Big figure eight, fast hops, pause in the corners. They'll eat it right there, or they'll eat it right there. But the slack line's definitely key. Well, probably 15 minutes into our drift here. About halfway back on my cast, I got smoked. Set the hook, just absolutely nothing. They have been nipping a lot lately. 
We brought it up to figure eight. She was still on me, kind of lazy, probably because I touched her with some hooks. Uh, but that was on a Team Rhino Custom Dine Dog, the weight on it. Throwing it out, letting it sink a little bit, ripping it back. Deep follow. I don't know if we're getting them to follow. We just need that little window to make them eat. We'll keep with it. Pipsqueak, what I'm good for every time. There you go. He slack a lot. Get out of here. Get down there. Okay. Oh. We might be getting into a window here. Brad had a really nice fish come up. On the figure eight, it was kind of lazy, but we actually visibly saw it. Um, and while he's figure eight, and I look down side imaging, there's one right off the boat. So I cast it over while he's figure eight and let it sink down, started popping it, and she just absolutely throttled it. Um, got it on a Bondi Royal Orba, regular size. I got a weight on it just to keep it down just a little bit deeper. Get it out of here. Nice black one. This is my first fish of the day. I've had two other bites. Like I said, they've been short striking pretty good today. here nice fish little spunky fella get him back and we'll get on another one there he goes that's how you want to release him all right boys let's get another one so it's midday now um the two humps that we were doing good on earlier, uh, we got two fish, lost two, raised a couple more. Um, we're gonna let those fish be and we're gonna go back on them this evening because this evening's when the best bite window has been for me the past couple weeks. Um, so now what we're doing is we're going out here in the main lake basin and we're gonna side imaging and try to mark muskies in this open basin. So when you have deep water structure and a lot of open water, that's a lot of water to co cover if you're just gonna go out and cast. With today's electronics, you can narrow down everything way faster. So I put my boat in gear and go medium, and I'm looking 100 feet that way, 100 feet behind us. And when I start marking muskies, I'll either put a waypoint down or a mental note of where that muskie's at. And then after we get done with whatever we want to look at, we're going to go back and we're going to really target those little areas that we have. And they could be suspended in 40 foot of water, or there could be a hump or a point that they're suspended off of. But the whole deal is, is to save time and mark muskies and then you can go back on them at the prime times and you got a lot of spots to cover in a short period of time. And whereas you would have cast it all day and might have raised one here and there. But now we're just using today's electronics to benefit us. Well guys, get starting to get into the evening time. Uh, 
They've definitely went really negative in the past couple hours, um, but we're still grinding out, and this one just randomly smoked me out way out on the cast. Team Rhino collar, uh, Dying Dog, got a weight on it. Same thing as I was talking about this morning, I let it sink for a little bit, maybe eight to 10 seconds, and then you start popping it. That slack line and that bait would go like this and really hop, and uh, it worked out. It's the same program. We've been doing all day, it's just fish went negative on us, but now they're starting to turn on. We're getting into that period. So it should get better and better. But let's get this out and look at it. Nice fish, he's mean. There we go. Nice little meatball. This thing is fired up. It's starting to tense up. Get her back. Start your next trip with a brand you can trust, Team Rhino Outdoors. For exclusive custom colors as well as trusted reliable standards, Team Rhino Outdoors has you covered with excellent service and delivery with top name musky brands. Since 2014, Team Rhino Outdoors has been the authority in all your musky tackle needs. Order your musky tackle today at TeamRhinoOutdoors.com. Aquatraction Marine Flooring has changed the game. Aquatraction has the highest density foam in the industry, which increases overall durability and abrasion resistance. Aquatraction uses the highest grade substrate material, which includes cross-link polyethylene that practically eliminates stains. Soft, durable, long-lasting marine flooring from a company that cares about their customers. All marine flooring is not the same. Go to Aquatraction.com to find a dealer near you and see the difference for yourself. Aquatraction, simply the best. figure eight, second turn of figure eight, third turn of the figure eight. There's my bait and my bait and two more figure eights when she swam off. She was a lazy one. We didn't want her anyways. Definitely in a window. We just released that fish 10 minutes ago. Well, the fish you just saw is now gone. She jumped completely out of the net. And I think that is literally the first time that has ever happened to me. Oh, I really love muskies. Wow. But anyways, the muskie I can't show you. Ate the same dying dog that has caught a fish on five minutes ago. Definitely a better fish, a 43, 44 probably. But gives us time for more. So let's get back out there.
Well, there's one. Jason had that one just jump on the, on the net. Up that there, got this one. Well, Jay gets number five. I mean, I'm back here. I'm throwing some baits. I don't know what's going on with me. I must think. But hey, we got number five in the bag. We're going to try to show you this one versus dumping it, Chase. But uh, good stuff. Team Rhino. What'd you call that, Chase? New Moon. New Moon Bulldog, Mag Dog. Little weight system on the bottom. And uh, hey, it's getting the work done. Good job, man. Let's pull this fish out of the bag and take a look. Angry little fella right here. Okay. Right. Nice. Awesome. Healthy little fish right here. Sweet, dude. Good job. Nice. Getting it done today. Those beautiful colors on her. Number five. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, we, we switched some things up there on these last three fish and it was pretty cool. We came to, you know, you can see the mouth back here to that whole cove, but the key to it was it's a little deeper structure kind of sliding up on a shoreline where, you know, earlier we were fishing humps and uh, Chase has got one in his back pocket here. We're gonna go check that out and see if there's a couple fish on that one as well. You know, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, Chase. I mean, a special day like this to put five fish in the boat, even though I haven't got one, but that's okay. I'm all about seeing those fish in the bag and, and it's been a, a really, really good time. Yeah, it has. I'm glad to see them uh, start going after grinding all day, but yeah. we it's, still got a lot of hours left, so. It's pretty wild. It's like a musky innovations day. I mean, you're throwing a dying dog. We've got uh, Jay throwing a bulldog and I'm back here throwing the mojo. Yeah. Hey, if that's what they're looking for, let's give it to them. You did get the one on the Royal Orba though as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's funny. all rubber, just hopping them like Chase had talked about earlier today. It's been the key. We're getting a bunch of different follows in here and uh, hey, we're putting some fish in the bag. Let's see if we can't find a couple more. Magnum Ventures Inc., a woman-owned company, has you protected when it comes to snow, sand, and wind structural fencing products, providing residential, commercial, governmental, and Department of Transportation options for superior property and roadway protection. Proudly made in the USA, Magnum Ventures Structural Snow Fence reduces the drifting and icing of roadways, decreasing the number of accidents and the need for roadside assistance. Contact Magnum Ventures at www.magvenink.com for your project needs. Musky Mayhem Tackle has a lot of firsts. They are the originators. The first to bring flash reboot to the musky industry. The first big double bladed bucktails. The first to create giant blades. 18 years of innovating, past and present. The first to develop new ideas. The first to be copied. If you're not first, you're last. Chase, just want to talk a little bit more about exactly what we're doing out here. Let's talk a little bit about the structure, then we'll go into the baits. 
kind of give us an idea, you know, I mean, we're catching some fish, we're seeing some fish. What is it exactly we're looking for? So mainly when I'm out here, I'm looking for deeper structure, uh, structure close to deep water. So points, points that run out in the lake, humps. There's many humps in this lake. Um, I'm really focusing in on 14 to 22 foot of water. Any of that, that you have that kind of structure in, more than likely there's gonna be a fish there. Um, we're coming into the summer months, so these fish are getting out in the deeper water. Um, it's, it's a great, great way to catch these fish here because they go from all in the shallow weeds and they run back up into the deeper humps. Um, the best way to, I've found to uh, cast them is with rubber baits. So the rubber baits are getting deeper. Well, when I'm doing that 18 to 22, I like to put a weight on it. So I'll put the weight on the bait, sink it down actually, and then like I've been talking about today is our cadence is very important. That cadence, if you're going too fast, that bait's going to rise up in the water column, the fish are never going to see it. But if you do that slack line, give that thing slack so that bait dives back down and it's not, you're not reeling the slack up to where the bait's coming back up. So every time you're hopping, that bait's going like this. That's key. I found that to be super key out here to have that hop. And that's why the three baits that we've caught fish on today have excelled everything else. Yeah, absolutely. And I think some of the neat thing is, you know, I think when anglers are out doing this musky fishing, they're looking for that weed edge or they're looking for maybe bait, you know, in the open water. We're just looking at basically bald structure, Yep. but it's a hump, you know, and so that hump becomes the structure that we're fishing. Yep. The fish are wanting to be in 15 to 20 foot of water. That's where they want to sit in the water column. So they'll either be suspended in that or since there's flats out here that are in that depth range, they'll sit right there on that flat. Thirty minutes after the last couple, uh, we moved spots, marked one on side imaging, had a couple lazy follows. Uh, the fish just weren't connecting, so I thought I'd try something different. I marked it out there, cast it out, let it sink, and then I was going like this instead of all day. We've been doing long rips. I did real short, really fast rips. Rod loaded up, got a really nice fish in the bag. Well, Dying Dog bags another one. Same exact collar. This collar's been great for me the past week. It is continuing to do work and get absolutely shredded. Let's get this fish out and get a look at her. So as you saw there, we've been working the baits all day talking about the key specific way to throw them. I tried something a little bit different, paid off and a little better fish. A nice fish here there. She could not resist it. Get her back here. 